I welcome you again to the service. You've just been welcome to the service. There was slight rain before you came. And also, we're during the storm of the season. <laughs> Hallelujah. Before we celebrate God into a new month, I'm speaking very quickly on the subject, lifting the limitations of the mind. Lifting the limitations of the mind. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to verse 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in the readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We have three objectives tonight on this subject lifting the limitations of the mind. Number one objective is to understand the effect of the limitations of the mind. Number two, that's understanding the effects of the limitations of the mind. When the mind is limited, there are effects of it. Number two, understanding the source of the limitations of the mind. The source of the limitations of the mind. Where do we get limited from in our minds? Understanding the source of the limitations of the mind. Number three. Understanding the cure for the limitations of the mind. How do we handle the limitations of the mind? How is it cured? Why are we dealing with this subject? Because existence at the top is our place in the subject of discussion the whole of this month. And one of the greatest limitations for the top is the mind. The mind plays a very critical role in the lives and destinies of people. It plays a very critical role in limiting the destinies of people. I'm sure you have heard the story of the circus elephant. That elephant that was caught and had rope tied to the leg. And then made to move in a cycle. In a cycles. And every time it wants to go. Forward. The rope pulls it back. It wants to move forward. The rope pulls it back. After a while. They remove the rope from the leg. And the elephant does not. Move beyond that cycle anymore. Because in his mind, he's not supposed to move beyond that cycle. The rope left the leg and is transferred to the brain. It's not physically limited anymore. It is mentally limited. There are many people today who have limitations not, that are not physical. They have limitations that are mental. And I believe that this month is not complete until we deal with the forces that hinder our rise to the top. And the major force there is the force of the mind. That is why we are dealing with this subject. There are four things that we need to know. Number one, that life and destiny are processed out of the mind. Out of the heart or mind. Life and destiny are processed. 
Proverbs 4.23 said, Guard your heart. Keep your heart or mind with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Life and destiny are processed out of the heart or mind. That is, life and destiny literally issue out of the heart. They issue. Life and destiny are processed out of the mind, heart or mind. Number two, the reality of the mind becomes the reality of life. The reality of the mind becomes the reality of life. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. He said, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The reality of the mind becomes the reality of life. I have many ways to say it and I, I, I like you to note all of, all of them. It also means that mentality places a limit on destiny. Mentality places a limit on destiny. Mentality places a limit on destiny. That is the limit of the mind is the limit of destiny. The limit of the mind is the limit of destiny. So life and destiny issue out of the heart. The reality of the mind, heart or mind, the reality of the mind becomes the reality of life. Number three. The captivity of the mind is the captivity of destiny. The captivity of the mind is the captivity of destiny. He says, where we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 4. Pull, pulling down strongholds. Yes, 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The captivity of the mind is the captivity of life and destiny. Whatever captures the mind has captured life, has captured destiny. Another way to say it is strongholds of the mind become the strongholds of life. They become the strongholds of life and destiny. Whatever holds your mind strong has held your destiny strong. That's what, that's what stronghold is. Anything that holds you very strong. Hallelujah. Finally, number four. Life is upgraded when the mind is renovated. Life is upgraded when the mind is renovated. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of the living God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not Conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good. And acceptable. And perfect will of God. Be transformed. By the renewing. Of the mind. The renewal of the mind. Is the transformation of life. The renewal of the mind is the transformation of, of life. If your life is not transformed, it means your mind is not renewed. Someone say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Anybody following tonight shout a louder amen. Do we have examples in scripture where people's lives and destinies were limited because of their mind? Yes. I'll give you four, five, four examples. Number one, the children of Israel and the report of the spies. In Numbers chapter 13 verse 33, 
they said. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Israel heard this report. And in chapter 14 from verse 1 to verse 3, the congregation lifted up their voices and wept. They got a limitation. Because somebody painted a picture. Two, ten people painted the picture of captivity. They got limited. All those congregations that wept and cried, all died in the wilderness. Only Caleb and Joshua entered the promised land. They were limited not by the devil, but by their mind. They couldn't enter their destiny because of the limitation of the mind. I prophesy to you, you will enter your destiny. That amen can be better than that. I prophesy to our nation, Nigeria, Nigeria will enter her destiny. Your family will enter into your destiny. If you believe that, shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat. Example number two. Philip and the multiplication of the, of, 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 of the bread. In John chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come to him. He said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that this may eat? Jesus is talking to Philip. This is said unto him to prove him. For he himself knew what he would do. Verse 7. Philip answered, 200 any wort of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little I like you to see two mentalities Jesus is saying where can we buy bread Philip is saying do you have enough money <laughs> that is the meaning of the question where can we buy bread Philip's concern is, where can we get the money? Jesus' concern is, where can we get the bread? So, mentality is the real determinant of destiny. You don't have a problem until your mind says you have it. You don't have a problem until your mind says you have it. If you say you can, you are right. If you say you can't, you are also right. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Jesus is thinking of where to get the bread. Philip is thinking of where to get the money. And for Jesus, both the money and the bread are available anytime he wants. And actually he could get the bread without using the money. And he got that. Look at your neighbor. Say, change your mind. So you can change your life. Say, change your mind. So you can change your, your life. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't consult your situation. To determine your destination. Decide your destination first. Then rearrange your situation. somebody and say don't consult your situation to decide your destination decide your destination first then you can rearrange your situation where is the money to build this place was not the first thing that came to mind what do we need a covered mega stadium that can accommodate tens of thousands of people. That was the first thing in the mind. The vision came first, then the provision later. 
And there are those who are struggling for provision first before thinking the vision. It's changing today. It's changing today. It's changing today. If you believe that, shout the Lord and say amen. Number four, for example, or number three, the man at the pool of Bethesda. In John chapter 5, verse 5, all the way to verse 7. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. Can you see? Question and answer. Do you want to be made whole? What is the answer? Yes or no? What was the man's answer? I have no man. For 37 years, he has been waiting for man. There are many people today, you are not waiting for your miracle. Your miracle is waiting for you. Let it be, let it be said without the guilt of overstatement. That the real situation of everyone lies with their decision. Will you be made whole? Yes, sir. I'm ready. His reply was, he went to town. <laughs> he went to town. I have no man. I have no man. You know, you see, I don't have any connection. And like, you know, it's a new government, you know, so I don't, I don't really know anybody. I don't have any connection. I don't have, there are, I, don't, I don't know. I have no contact. I have no man. I stopped school when my father died. My uncle that brought me to Abuja has changed his mind. I have no man. And he said, who is talking man here? Mary almost committed the same abomination. You shall bring forth a child. Say, oh, I don't know a man. He said, no, 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 we are not talking of man here. God wants to bypass man. God wants to bypass system. He wants to bypass certain processes and give you a solution that you cannot imagine. Is there anybody here today that God will bypass something to give you a solution? If you are that one, shout the Lord and say, Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I am changing my mind today. I cannot wait on man and waste my life. Hey! Look at someone say, I cannot wait on man and waste my life. Say after me, under God, I am taking my destiny in my hands under God and I must become what God wants me to become. You believe and shout the Lord and say amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. The Lord must shout of praise. The shout of praise at the top of your voice. Look at your neighbor. Say what you want for your life is far more important that what man, than what man can do for you. Say to somebody, I say what you are willing to do for yourself is far more important than what any man can do for you. That was a man limited at the pole. And then finally, the prodigal son. In Luke chapter 15 verse 17, Luke 15, 17, Luke 15, 17, he said, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers 
have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him father I have sinned against heaven and before thee I'm not worthy to be called down for as long as that man didn't come to his senses he didn't come to his changes There is a connection between your sense and your change. A change of reason will bring a change of season. This man's season changed when his reason changed. For as long as he thought that his life was over, because he had already got his father's inheritance. So that he couldn't go anywhere back to his father anymore. For as long as he thought that his life and everything was over with his father. It was over. But when he came to his senses. If my father can employ strangers that he didn't know. At least I'm, I'm his son. Even if I have collected my inheritance. Father employ me to be like, like one of these servants. I need a job. When you come to your senses, you come to your changes. When you have a change of reason, you will have a change of season. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say louder amen. amen. Place your right hand on your head and say in the name of Jesus, every limitation in my mind, today is your end. I command you to be dissolved and be demolished now in Jesus precious name now very very quickly what are the sources of mental limitations of limitations in the mind and I pray that this will bring therapy it will bring healing to somebody number one negative words and treatment from childhood Negative words and treatment from childhood. Those kind of children that their father, their mother never found anything good in. They kept on speaking negative words to them. You can't do well, you can't, can't amount to anything. Those words grew with them. As they grew, the word grew with them. Children who never experienced the love of a father. Or the love of a mother. They never found any affirmation. All they ever had was condemnation. It brings mental limitation. And I'm saying this so that parents can learn. Don't destroy the future of your children with your words of today. Some of these words also come from school teachers. That's why you should beware the kind of school that you put your children in. That's why school proprietors must be strict. Any teacher who is fond of using negative words on children should be immediately given a sack letter. Go and burn your own children and use any word you want on them if you want. The child may fail an exam but it's not a failure. The failure of an exam is, does not make a failure. Your action is different from yourself. Am I communicating? Very, very important. The growing up period of children are, are very, very sensitive periods where you condemn the action but commend the child. And most times, intentions are perfect. Most times, actions may be imperfect, but the intentions are perfect. Maybe you are seated here tonight and all you receive from childhood whether in school or from parents or whoever or maybe senior brother or senior sister or elderly people around you was, were negative words. Tonight I speak by the authority of Jesus. I declare them cleaned out of your life by the preaching of the word in the name of Jesus. 
Let your mouth be filled with blessings for your children. You will do well. You will succeed. You will be better than us. You will go where we haven't gone. Let it be full of positive pronouncements. Number two. Recurrent negative patterns and cycles. When there are patterns that are negative. For example, everybody is receiving favor. When it became your turn, the line stopped. And then this kind of thing begins to repeat here and there, here and there, here and there. All of a sudden, the devil will tell you that is your own life's pattern. That is how your, your life is meant to be. Negative, recurrent negative patterns and cycles. When it is time for your favor, something else happens. Maybe you've been in a relationship and then before, when it's time to get married, something happens. Today, those patterns are arrested. Yeah. Number three, past failures, mistakes or errors. You made, you failed at a time. You made mistakes or you committed some blunders or errors. And the devil wants it to live with you. To remain with you forever. The devil makes you think and feel like a failure. You didn't graduate with your classmates. You failed work. Failed your degree exam. Whatever it was. You failed in a marriage. Maybe. Or failed in something. And the devil wants to say look. You are just a failure. There is nothing that you are good at. That devil is a bastard liar. Somebody say that devil is a bastard liar. I announced to you today. See, Noah failed. I mean, what do you call it? Jonah. When God asked him on an assignment, he failed so bad that they threw him inside the water. The fish swallowed him. Not he swallowed the fish. Like somebody thought sometimes that if fish swallowed, how can fish swallow a person? It must have been the person who swallowed the fish. And he got confused. He said, well, there was a swallowing something, swallow something. And God took Jonah and still vomited him out in the place of his destination. And he continued and fulfilled his assignment there. I don't know what you failed. I don't know of any man under heaven who has not failed in one thing or the other. Maybe it's school, maybe exam, maybe one thing or the other. But I announce to you today, your failure is not you. And I announce to you today, in the name of Jesus, the bend of the road is not the end of the road. The bend of the road is not the end of the road. When you reach the bend, the road continues. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? It may be the end of the day, but it's not the end of the game. The game can continue tomorrow. Am I communicating at all? I announce to somebody here today. Every failure that the devil has attached to your life as your identity. I declare it clean and detached from your life. I declare God give you a breakthrough and a success until your failures will not be remembered. That was what happened to Naaman the Syrian. He was a leper. Yet he was the chief of general staff. The chief of armies. The chief of defense staff. Because he performed so well that his setback could not resist his impact. Somebody say a loud amen. Past failures, mistakes or errors. Number four, wrong company or association. They can give you a negative mindset. I'm talking of those who never value your potential. Yet you call them friends. They keep on pointing out to you what you can't do. They are never excited in your, in, in your potential. They are never excited in your possibility. Those are not friends. If you have such people in your life, you don't need a devil. You don't need a second devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Friends who talk negatively to you and talk negatively about you. Please stay away from those kind of people. So that you can keep your mind clear. People who talk small, small talk. Petty, petty talk. They are, they are, they are concerned about, fixated on pe people. 
They keep talking of people, talk down on this and talk down on that. And they are just gossipers and all those kind of kind of people. Huh? Never see anything good in anybody, and so they won't see anything good in you. They slander, 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 slander. And when they come close to you, they flatter, 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 flatter. In your presence, they flatter you. In your absence, they slander you. Please run away so that you can keep your mind clear. I don't have any, any one individual in my life who talk negative, who speaks small, who doesn't believe in the possibility of great things. I don't have any one person like that in my life. Number five, thing that can limit the mind will be societal limitations. Societal, sorry, societal conditions and expectations. What the society has placed as a bar. Maybe it's even your own family. This is where we normally reach. Under this kind of condition. This is what is possible. This is what is achievable. This is what is accomplishable. This is the established norm in the society. Please don't let society limit you. And don't let society set the standards for you. Let Jehovah God set the standards for you. How many of you know that if you follow society today, you may actually run mad because there is a lot of madness going on in society now. Somebody say he's a man outside but inside him he feels like a woman. So he starts taking female hormones and want them to do him a surgery to construct a female reproductive system for him. I saw the horrible picture of a woman the other day who says she's meant to be a man but she's a woman. They did her radical mastectomy, removed the two breasts so he can be a man. But they left the nipple area. It was very ugly. Are you following what I'm saying here today? Terrible. You, me and you saw the other one the other day. Where a young girl went back to the doctor. He said, I, she changed into a, is a man, a man, right? She changed into a man at age 15. She sued the doctor. Why didn't you advise me not to change? <laughs> he said, you, you, you know, I made the decision when I was less than 18. Why didn't you advise me contrary? That's the madness of the society today. We are hearing that some people say they, they, they think they should be old. Why are they young? Some people think that they, they think, I, I think they talk about one man who said he's meant to be young. He feels young. So he's starting to drink feeding bottle or something. <laughs> Where is Pampa sleeping in a baby cot? If you follow the, if you follow what society, what you will run crazy. If you follow their craze, <laughs> somebody said that very soon somebody will be transcanine. I, I, I feel like I'm meant to be a dog. I decree to you today, every limitation placed on your life placed on your destiny is lifted right here now <laughs> say the Lord is amen it can limit the mind that societal conditions and expectations number six negative pictures and suggestions this is the situation where the devil shows you people all around you maybe from your family maybe from where you came from and nobody amounted to anything he shows you the pictures negative pictures negative suggestions this also is in the realm of negative prophecy. Somebody giving you a prophecy that is not in line with the reality of what your life should be. 
This goes to the realm of dreams as well. Where the devil is showing you dreams, things in the dream that are opposite what the reality should be. Negative pictures. Negative suggestions. When you accept them, they can become your limitation. Finally, number seven. I call this one negative self-limiting belief. Self-limiting belief. These are the kind of people who say all fingers are not equal. They are, they, are, they are unable to see themselves the way God sees them. Something inside them, in fact, they themselves tells themselves that they can't be anything. It's self-limiting. If all fingers are not equal, why don't you choose to be the long finger? Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Self-limiting belief, but there is solution. And that solution is coming your way tonight. I said there is solution and that is coming your way tonight. There are, there are people who beat themselves. They, they beat themselves more than anybody beat them. It can be a culmination of all these things. Stand in the mirror. Say, look at you. At your age. They hate what they see. They hate what they see in the mirror. My wife know and my children know that I'm the opposite of that kind of I look at him and I say, Wow. Nice. You man. <laughs> Permanently. Oh. The other day on Sunday they were, they were recording me. He said, Daddy, you're looking so young and so sharp and so smart. I say, wait a minute, let me walk for you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I speak to myself. I say, you know what? The world is waiting for you. You are impacting your generation. You are making them. Why is the camera not showing me now? I am demonstrating how you should stand in front of the mirror. Look at yourself and like what you see. Like what you see. Like who you see. Commend who you see. Prophesy on who you are seeing. Prophesy on who you are seeing. Prophesy on who you are seeing. I must make a mark in my generation. I am a voice to my generation. No devil can silence me. I'm a ho I matter to this generation. I matter to this generation. There is a connection between confidence and competence. If you are confident, anything you do, you will be competent. Lack of confidence is lack of competence. I'm not sure of this kind of dress I'm wearing. My wife said, then you better pull it and wear another one. And because I mean she knows that I have to be sure of how I'm looking so that I can be sure of how I don't want any condition of uh, am I okay to distract my release yes, sir. I removed the tie it was choking me uh, I just removed the tie it was choking me <laughs> hey! Because I'm the owner of the tide, the tide doesn't own me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Stand up on your feet. I, I want you to speak just two, three words. Say, in the name of Jesus, I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. I matter to this generation. No devil can sit on my destiny. I am going somewhere to fulfill destiny. I shall become, I must become everything God wants me to become. Shout the loudest amen. Say after me, our nation Nigeria shall become, must become 
everything God wants her to become. Shout the Lord and say amen. Shout the Lord and say amen. When you go home tonight or before you wake up and go out in the morning, just look at yourself. Talk to yourself. Prophesy to yourself. Affirm yourself. I don't care what people think about you. Think good about yourself. When the lizard falls from an Italian roko tree, lands on the floor, he waits a little bit to see if anybody will commend it. And nobody commends it. He knows he said, he say, I don't care what you feel. I think I have tried. <laughs> have you seen it before? He will just look left, look right. You're on your own. <laughs> I have tried. If you wait for external encouragement, you may die of discouragement. Human beings are so preoccupied with themselves most times that they don't have the time for any other person. Am I communicating? So you must, you must make the time for yourself. If people don't have time for you, have time for yourself. You know many of you, it is only when visitors come to your house that you bring out that shiny plate, that china plate. Uh, only when visitors come, you bring the china plate, the one that has a golden rim, the one that is so powerful that must not break, and then you bring the bottle of wine, the capel or the eva, eva wine or whatever else. But whenever visitors didn't come, you treat yourself anyhow. You just, treat, you just carry any plate from it. You know what I want you to do? One of these days, entertain yourself. <laughs> hey! One of these days, set the table for yourself. Bring out the best plate. Bring out the best bottle of, of, of wine. Not alcohol. Not alcohol. And, and, and don't, and don't, and don't, and don't, and don't Nicodemus sleep would say one percent. Zero percent. <laughs> so, so that you are not walking on the road and your leg is missing. And they say, the pastor say we should entertain ourselves. That is, <laughs> you know that that is not what I'm talking about. Your conscience bear you witness. That that is not what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the way you see yourself is the way you have been treating yourself. The way you see yourself is the way you have been handling yourself. There is no plate of anything that can be used to serve anybody where I am. That, that is not used to serve me consistently. None. None. That a visitor came and this is the this is the this is the uh, the way the visitor is treated. Separate from how I have been treated continuously. None. No Christmas dress. If it arrives today, it, it can be out tomorrow. <laughs> hey! I am telling you. I am telling. See, the way you think is the way you behave. Is the way you act. Is the way you function. That is the way you you handle your life. And then it becomes very. And then you walk somewhere at the airport and they look at you. Oh wow! Everybody is just looking at you because for you it is every day's celebration. Because that is how you program your mind and your life to be. Bathroom slippers for me is only in the bathroom. Only in the bathroom. Why do they call it bathroom slippers and you are wearing it in the parlor? <laughs> hey! Hey! Somebody shout power! Shout it loudest power! Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. This is why I like God. And this is why I like church. Because any whatever happens around in society, there is life in church. There is joy in church. There is hope in church. There is excitement in the church. Is there anybody with hope here tonight? Anybody with joy here tonight? With excitement here tonight? Shout the loudest, amen. What is the key?
cure for the limitations of the mind. Curing the limitations of the mind. Number one, renew the mind continually with the word of God. Renew the mind continually with the word of God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. I beseech you therefore brethren by the methods of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind continually with the word of God. Number two. Can I proceed? Just keep on washing your mind. This kind of message is good for, for the mind. This type. Keep on washing your mind. The existence at the top. Those type that deal with mediocrity and inferiority. Keep on washing your mind. Number two, allow the Holy Spirit to uncover the possibilities of destiny to your mind. The possibilities of your destiny to your mind. Allow the Holy Spirit, walk with the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Spirit a lot and allow the Holy Spirit to uncover for you the possibilities of your destiny to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and in verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things. Yea. The deep things of God. The spirit searcheth all things. Yeah. The deep things of God. The spirit searcheth all things. Yeah. The deep things of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to unveil to you the possibilities of your destiny. To uncover the possibilities of your destiny. There are many, many things that are possible for your life. It's the Holy Ghost that will show you. As you play, pray in the spirit, as you quiet in yourself, he, he unveils. Number three, keep company. With positive, high-flying, high-thinking people. Keep the company. Keep company with positive, high-flying, and high-thinking people. People who think high. Who fly high. First Corinthians 15 and in verse 33. He said, be not deceived. Evil communications, corrupt good manners. T communicating with wrong people will change your behavior negatively. First Corinthians chapter, Proverbs 13 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Don't hate people, but avoid anyone whose presence in your life pulls you down. Avoid them. Don't communicate to them that you hate them. Just avoid them. Just avoid them. Avoid them. And if you need to, if you need to persistently pursue the right company, pursue it. The right company. And a man that will have friends must show himself friendly. Hallelujah. Number four. Reject negative enemy pictures and suggestions by the word. Reject negative enemy pictures. And suggestions by the word. We already saw that in scripture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3 to 5. Reject it. Reject it. For though we walk in the flesh. We do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing. That exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought. To the obedience of Christ. Reject them. See yourself where God sees you. Whether the devil is showing you a wrong, a, a bad dream of you riding bicycle, tell the devil it is you and your generation that are on bicycle. <laughs> Put him on bicycle. Long John, long John. Ride, riding and climbing a hill. When last did you see me in the physical riding such a bicycle? Uh, giving me what I'm not doing in the physical. You and your generation, your fathers, all of you, Ride the bicycle. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Uh, driving a car, Peugeot, the type that does not exist anymore. 
Say, Satan, where did you see this car now? Old coin that they've stopped printing. The coin, the one that has hole inside. See yourself carrying it in the dream. Say, devil, it is you that will have this generational poverty. <laughs> the devil is very, very excited with people who are patient with him. Uh, but he's not a gentleman. You don't deal with him gently. Talk to him angrily. Get out. Get the hands. That was how Jesus talked to the devil. For thou art an offense to me. In fact, he was talking to Peter that was possessed with Satan. Get the hand, Satan. For you are not, you are, you suffer us not the things that are of God, but the things that are of the flesh. That's how to behave. Am I communicating at all? Refuse to be patient with anything the devil is giving you. There are times you wake up in the night with a sufficient dose of anger. Deal with that devil. Go back to sleep. One day I dreamt the dream. When I woke up, I dealt with the devil angrily. I say, I'm sleeping back. If you are a devil enough, return the dream. Return back the dream. If you are a devil, the boy you were, show the dream again. If he's powerful, he would have returned it, isn't it? <laughs> hey! Somebody shout the loud and say, Amen. In the name that is above every name, everyone that is a victim of every negative satanic suggestion, I declare it is over. Finally, Matthew chapter 5. All right, finally, always see and place yourself where God sees and placed you. Where God sees you and where God placed you. Always see and place yourself where God sees and placed you. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. First Peter 2 9. You are royalty. You are a queen. <laughs> One day, my wife and I went somewhere. Um, For a service. So the person who was attending to me, the way he saw how she followed me and helped me to sit down and those kind of things. He said, you know what? I am going to treat you like a queen. Because your wife treats you like that. But I'm not a queen. He doesn't know the difference. It's limited English. The Bible says you are a royal priest, so you are royalty. You are royalty. Do royalty appear like this? One day I cut one cloth. My wife likes it a lot. She used to wear it at home. I cut it. I say if I catch this dress next time, I will lead that bonnet. <laughs> I will either burn it or bury it or something. I will do something to it if I catch the cloth. <laughs> do you remember the cloth? The moment we come home, we just hang the cloth. See, there are some cloth that look like hanger. <laughs> she said that every. <laughs> <laughs> One woman told me, I said, every woman has that cloth. <laughs> Who told you that, that there is such a cloth where you just totally abandon yourself? Only potato has the right to wear some cloth. Even at home. <laughs> now, many of you, your husband is working in the office where the secretary it's well polished, polished body, polished face, and it's just dangling herself in front of him like carrot. <laughs> right? Can I have a, 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 a glass of tea there? Yes, sir. 
right? And the man finishes seeing that in the office and he's returning home to rest only to see Madame in hunger. worst of it is that on top of the hunger there is this shower cap that enters in. <laughs> All those things need to be burned or buried. I think I've arrested one of your clothes before. Even though I've arrested one of our clothes before. Praise the Lord. Life is practical, not mystical. You can <laughs> make life easy for yourself. There, was a, a, there is a man who gave his wife instruction. He said, before he wakes up in the morning, the woman must be totally dressed and sharply polished. That is the first thing he should meet on waking up. That is so that he can calm his head down. So that he can look straight. <laughs> hey! 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 Stand up on your feet to the shout of praise. A loud shout of praise. The loud most shout of praise. Shout it at the top of your voice. Hallelujah. I'm sure many of you have seen some of those kind of dress before. You cannot tell whether it's a t-shirt or a gown. <laughs> there, there are some that look... Uh, and then the other one is the rapper that just... say you are royalty behave like you are royalty everywhere you are you are royalty now I want us to celebrate two things number one thing to celebrate is your royalty celebrate the blasting off of every wrong mentality and celebrate the fact that God has a place for you on the top. The second thing we are celebrating is that the Bible said the path of the just is a shining light that shining more and more unto the perfect day. June must be better than May. We are crossing over from May into June. June must be better than May. It is more and more to the perfect day. When men say they are cast down, you shall be saying there is a lifting up. And so we are going to celebrate our lifting. Are you ready? Are you ready? But before we do that, lift up your hands. How many of you were actually blessed by this word? Lift up your hands and give the Lord the praise for his word to you. Open your mouth. I need some guys over here. Open your mouth and give the Lord the praise. 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 <laughs> In the name of Jesus. 